Hey everybody, welcome to Harmon Garage. I'm Aaron and uh, it's a cold, I wouldn't say cold, cold for me day here in Alabama and uh, I need to get myself motivated so I can start getting some work done so I can warm up. But you saw in the last video, I told you at the end that we're gonna continue on lowering cherry pie here. And that's exactly what we're gonna do, so. Front end's all done. You should have seen that. If you haven't, you should go back and check it out. Now it's time to get on the back. We're gonna flip the axle, put drop shackles on it, which requires trimming the bed frame and C-notching and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna get it all done in this video. I'd like to get it all done today, but we'll see how the day goes. So I'm gonna start getting my stuff together and we'll uh, start going through the process. All right, it's time to get some stuff done here. We're gonna start getting this rear end prep to pull out. And there's a few things I do to uh, make my life easier. First thing is, I know I'm putting shackles on this. Let me, let me get a flashlight so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. So. Like I was saying, there's a few things that I do to help myself out. I know I'm gonna have to see notch it. I know I'm gonna have I know I'm putting shackles on it and I'm gonna have to relieve the brace in the bed for the shackles. So what I'm gonna do is go down under here and we got our shackle there with the bolt in it. And uh so I'm gonna go ahead and take a marker and mark outside of the bolt on this side. So I know how much has to be relieved. And then I'm gonna come over here on this side, go outside the bolt and mark that too. And then once I get the rear end out, I'll be able to mark and I'll be able to relieve that frame to uh, so my shackle has room to go up in that brace and uh, it'll make it a lot easier on me because if you take your spring and your shackle out and go to do that then you uh, have you have to kind of guess where you got it and you end up cutting it way bigger than it needs to be and everything else and then when I come in here to do my C notch I'll mark the outsides of my bump stop and make my marks for my notch and then I can go ahead and cut that and do all that stuff and then that'll be lined up right so when I get done and put my rear end back in with the flip kit and all that stuff that it'll be in the right spot for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I got the jack stands under the rear end right now. I'm gonna jack the truck back up. I'm gonna take the jack stands out from under the rear end and then I can put them on the frame and then I'll put the jack under the rear end and I'll pull my uh, spring bolts out of the mounts and I can drop that rear end down and get it out of the truck. And then I'll make all the modifications I have to make to the truck to make it fit. And then we'll look around here and find our parts for our flip kit and our drop shackles and all that stuff. And then we can start putting it back together. All right, I got my jack stands up there on the frame out from underneath the rear end. I came over to this side. You probably can't see, but it's there. I came over this side, marked my relief for that and now I need to come under here I need to disconnect my brake hose that goes from the frame stub to the rear end I need to disconnect my vent hose that goes up to the bottom of the bed and just because it's easier I'm gonna leave my parking brake cables attached because I don't want to fight with the surface rust and stuff trying to get them off so I got to disconnect the shocks brake hose 
vent tube and then uh, should be ready to drop this axle and we can get it down on the floor there's plenty of slack in the parking brake cables so it should be able to lower down to the floor without any problems and then uh, once I get it down to the floor we can go ahead and take the springs off the axle take the old shackles off all that kind of stuff I'll go through all that when we get to that point but right now I'm going to do what I said I was gonna do and then I'll bring you guys back and show you what we're doing next all right I got the shocks off or disconnected from the rear end I got the brake line loose I got the vent taken down um, all that stuff next thing I'm gonna do since I'm doing this by myself and it'll make it easier for me I'm gonna go ahead and crack all these u-bolts loose and drop the rear end down I'm leaving the drive shaft hooked up I don't plan on taking the rear end all the way out of the truck like I'm it's gonna sit there on the jack I'm just gonna drop it down out of the way now by taking the rear end loose first since I'm doing it by myself it's gonna make it a lot easier on me to get these leaf springs out I can take the front out drop it down let it sit on the rear end and then take the back loose pop it up out of its perch and then I'll be able to take that spring and bring it out of the truck and uh, chain then I'll have room to get in there and make my relief cuts in the bed brace I haven't decided if I'm gonna notch this yet because this is the exact same setup and the exact same thing that I did on groundskeeper and I notched groundskeeper but when I got it all back together there was still probably five or six inches between the top of the rear end and the bottom of the frame and I could jump up and down on the back of the truck and it wouldn't even go into the notch so you get lower trucks and stuff like this you're usually not going to be hauling a bunch of stuff with them and if I can drop it down and still have room where it's not going to hit the frame right there then I'm not going to notch it because there's no reason to cut the stock frame if you don't have to so I'm going to get I have to take the bump stop off for sure and that's going to give me probably three more inches and then uh, I'll get everything down I'll get everything mocked up I'll get my drop shackles on I'll get my reliefs made back here on the bed brace and all that stuff and then I'll jack it back up to where I can mount everything and I'll kind of loosely mount everything and I'll take take it off the jack stands set it down on the ground and if I have still got four inches between the rear end and the frame I'm not gonna do nothing with it if I don't then I'll go ahead and put a small notch in there but probably not as big of a notch as I put in groundskeeper because like I said it it didn't even need it I could have got away without notch and groundskeeper and it would have been fine so next thing I'm going to do is get these u-bolts loose I always soak them really really good with some kind of penetrating lube and then I'll let them sit there for a minute then I come back with a decently stout wire brush and I'm going to go in there and I'm going to brush all those threads down get as much dirt and rust and gunk and everything as I can out of them so when I go to take these bolts off or these nuts off I'm not trying to cut through the rust and screwing up threads and everything else like I've got an impact that'll take them off regardless it's not going to matter but I'm, the kit that I order to do the axle flip usually comes with new u-bolts so I'm probably not going to use these but I'll still keep them around because I might need them on another project so I want to try to be as nice to them as I can so I can save them and use them again same thing with this top plate it won't be used anymore the kit usually comes with them so I've got probably two other sets sitting over on my bolt bin that are the same for the same reason I dropped the truck and the new stuff used the new stuff that came with the kit and I just got these sitting around but one day I'll need them or I'll just carry them around for the rest of my life and won't but if I throw them away I'll need them next week so I save them, but I'm going to let you guys listen to some music and I'm going to sit here and scrub some threads. Alright, 
I got those all scrubbed up pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and hose them down again just to clean them off and maybe help a little bit in the long run. I'll let that sit there for a second and do its job. It's one thing I've learned in the past with penetrating oil is patience. Like I used to spray it on there and go at it thinking it was going to work right away, but it doesn't. It's got to have time to get in there and do its job, actually penetrate. So let it sit there for a few minutes and kind of work its magic. Should be okay because I already soaked it prior to scrubbing it, so I don't have to let it sit super long. But never have too much lube. So go in here and see how they do. Well, these are probably the easiest ones I've ever had come off. They're literally coming off real easy. I just put the battery in my impact right before I took the tires off. And for some reason, it's dead already. So I don't know if I didn't have it on the charger all the way and it didn't get charged. Or maybe my battery's going to crap or something. I don't know. Or... Maybe my gun's just draining batteries because it wiped that one out already too. So, have to figure that out. You might have noticed I loosened them all but didn't take them all the way off. The reason I did that is because uh, if you take the nuts all the way off of like one, then and things are bouncing all over the dang place when you're trying to get the other side off. So I just leave them, loosen them up to where they're hand tight, leave them loose, and then get the rest broke loose. So. All right, well, I got those off nice and easy. I'm going to go over and do the same process on the other side, and then we'll be able to uh, lower this rear end down and get it out of our way. Okay, I got all my U-bolts off on both sides, so technically there shouldn't be anything holding the rear end in the truck anymore, other than the floor jack that I got it sitting on, so I'm going to go ahead and go back here, let the jack down slowly. Let the rear end come down out of my way. And it's trying to tilt forward. I really don't want it to do that, but. Hmm. Okay, we got that drop down. Jack's still underneath it, so it'll be easy to get it back up. And uh, we're just going to leave that sit there like that. I'm going to go ahead and get these springs pulled out, which requires taking the one bolt out of the front hanger and one bolt out of the, the lower bolt in the shackle. Probably going to have to get in here. I'll probably have to get in here with a pry bar to pop that out. I might have to pry the front out, but they usually drop right down. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, zap those out real quick. And we'll get the springs out on the floor. And then we can start getting rid of bump stops and making our reliefs for the shackles and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop the four bolts out, get the springs out, get them on the ground. And then we'll uh, show you the next step. All right, well, we've made some progress. 
I got the leaf springs out. I got them sitting back here. We've got our new drop, two inch drop shackles. We've got our axle flip kit, which come with U bolts and new washers and new bolts and new plates. So I pulled them all the way out while I got them out here in the open. I'm gonna go ahead and change the shackles out on them. It'll make it easier, pop that bolt out, pop the new shackles in. And then I'm gonna have to go underneath and trim the bed and get those bump stops off. But it's getting later in the day. I didn't, I got a late start today. It's getting later in the day. The weather made a quick turn. It's dropped about 20 degrees in the last probably 30 minutes. And as I've told you before, I don't do real good in the cold and I don't have any heat in here yet. So I'm gonna go home, spend some time with my little girl and my other kids and my wife and uh, I'll get back at it in the morning. All right, well, it's the next day. It's colder today than it was yesterday. So I guess coming back today thinking it was gonna be warmer was pointless. But anyways, we're gonna push through it. We're gonna get some work done. I'm gonna cut these bump stops off both sides. I'm gonna mark out and trim out my bed, my bed brace right there. We'll get the shackles changed over and then we can start getting this rear end put back in. So it's gonna be quite a bit of work, but shouldn't be too bad. And uh, I just gotta get to it and get it done. Um, I forgot to bring a light over. So it's gonna be kind of hard to see what I'm doing underneath. And there's not a lot of room under there anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the bump stops off, get the notches put in the bed brace, and then I'll show you guys what I did. Okay, well, I got the uh, bump stops, popped the rivets, got them off. And I got the bed brace cut out for the shackles, which I'm gonna show you here in a second. Then I went ahead and cut some, popped the rivets on some old exhaust hangers on the frame just because the exhaust isn't going through them anymore and they're just kind of hanging there and not needed. So here's the bed brace all cut out. Same on both sides. Bump stops are gone. I think I already mentioned this to you guys, but just in case I didn't, I'll go over it again. I did groundskeeper the exact same way, and I put about, I think it was like a two and a half inch notch in the frame for the rear end to go up into the frame if it needed to. And when I got all done with that truck and put everything together, the even if I'd push down on it and try to get the rear end up into the notch in the frame, it never went up into it. So I'm gonna put this all back together without notching the frame and see if I have clearance. And if I do, I'm not gonna notch it because why cut the frame if you don't have to? So I've seen all over the internet, oh, you know, you do an axle flip, you have to do a C-notch. You do an axle flip, you have to do a C-notch. And I've just always done it. But after doing groundskeeper and paying close attention and seeing how much room I still had why murder the frame if you don't have to? I mean, it's not murdering it, but you're hacking it up and it's better if you leave it alone. So I'm gonna try leaving it alone. If it doesn't clear, then I go in there with a plasma cutter or a cut off wheel and whack a chunk of the frame out and weld my, my U in and my brace on the inside and all that. And we go on with our day. But if it will fit, not gonna cut it and I learned something new. So, yeah, um, next thing I'm gonna do is get these old shackles, oops, get the old shackles off the leaf springs. We'll get our new shackles put on and then I'll get under there and I'll put my flip brackets in, get the leaf springs back underneath or, or underneath the rear end. I don't wanna say back cause they weren't there before, but. We'll get them under the rear end and I'll kind of get everything loosely bolted up the best I can with the rear end on the floor. And then we'll 
Um, I'm actually gonna hang the, I'll go over it all. I'm gonna film it for you. So we're gonna start putting the rear end back together. All right, so I'm just gonna take the shackles off and put the new ones right back on. And we'll be ready to send her home. Put them back in their place. So watch your ears, it's kind of loud. All right, let me bring this over there and show you guys. Now if you look at this shackle, you can see it's got two holes in it. The top hole, or the longest part hole, is two inch drop. The bottom one is one inch drop. So I'm going two, so I want it all the way up at the top. And the way this works is, let me just throw some stuff around and then I'll explain it to you. So the way this works is, you see this shackle, it's only about, just rough guesstimate, but four inches hold the hole. This one, six inches hold the hole. So when it's sitting in there in its perch, the mounting point of the spring is two inches higher, which brings your rear end two inches closer to the bottom of the bed, which lowers the body of the truck two inches. So that's how this works. These are direct replacement for this, but you have to cut that bed brace like I showed you, because when these stock ones are on there and the springs hung on them, they've got about I'd say maybe a half inch of clearance on that bed brace for it to move back and forth. Well, you put this up there next to it, half inch of clearance, that's not even going to get you to that first hole. So you got to cut, you know, a good portion of that bed brace out so this has room to, for one thing, just fit in there and it's got to be able to pivot without hitting the bed. So when I put these on, I'm going to. I'll run the nuts down with the impact and stuff, but I'm not going to tighten them. You don't ever want to have your pivot points on your suspension be tight because if you run them down and hammer them down and tighten them, then I'm not going to say they won't move, but it makes it a lot harder for them to move. And you want your suspension to be able to travel freely however it wants to go. So when you put your front spring bolt back in, I'm not saying, you know, like hand thread the nut on and leave it, but they're lock nuts, so wherever you set them, they're going to stay there. So I run them down to where they look like they're tight, but you can still spin the washers, and I leave them right there, and then that gives your suspension free ability to travel however it wants to. So I'm going to go ahead and finish putting this shackle on, throw that other one on, and then we can start putting the springs back in the truck. All right, I got that taken care of. Where'd I leave off? I think I was talking about the through bolt on the spring. I just want to let you guys know some of these axle flip kits that you buy, you have to take this, you have to take this nut off the centering pin, and sometimes they come off really easy. Sometimes they break, and you got to go find a new centering pin, and it's a pain in the butt. But you got to take that out. Flip it over so that your dowel for your alignment's on the top instead of the bottom. But this kit that I've got, they put nice big holes in it so that you don't have to do that. That hole fits nice right over the top of that nut. 
and you're done. Saves you a little bit of work, saves some frustration, makes it so you don't ruin pins and have to go find new ones. So if you're doing this, you order these flip brackets, read the directions, pay attention. If it says you got to flip that, you probably got to flip it. But if you get these bigger ones, you don't have to. Or if you're like me and you get the one that tells you to flip the pin, you just take a step bit and uh, hog it out to the size of the nut so it slides on there and stick it on. That's what I normally do. So you notice this has two holes in it. If you read the directions, I just already know, but you put it in this front hole, which is center hole, your rear end was right there. You put it in this front hole, it moves your rear end back probably about an inch center to center. And because when you lower the truck and bring the rear end up higher, that makes the distance between your yoke on your rear end and your output shaft on your transmission shorter. So if you center it and put it up there, then you're losing the amount of travel that you have in your drive shaft and that yoke on the drive shaft can start punching the back of that transmission. That's never good. So that's why it's got the offset hole. Put it in the offset hole, it moves the rear end back a little bit and it leaves you your gap that you need your 5 eighths of an inch or whatever that you need for in and out travel on your drive shaft so I'm done talking for now I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this stuff going in there I'm going to put these put the springs underneath the rear end and get my flip brackets on the kit came with new plates. They're off center drilled too, so when you put that under there, you put it same way, front hole. And then I got new U bolts and nuts. I already showed you guys all those. So I'm going to try to get these loosely mocked up on the rear end. And then I can start jacking the rear end back up, and I'll get my rear shackles in and bolted first. And then you just jack the rear end up, and it'll bring the front spring up into its hanger so I'll turn the camera so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing and uh, I'm going to start going back together with it alright I already got my leaf spring slid in here don't think I brought you bolts that would be fairly helpful now pretty easy to figure out but just in case you've never done it don't know uh, when you put this back in here you noticed when I took it apart I took the u-bolts nuts off the top well because we're flipping it over now the u-bolts are going to go down from the top and your mounting plates and your nuts are going to be on the bottom and see if I can get you guys in here where you can see. You might not be able to because there's no light, but so here's my U bolts. Here's the pad where the springs used to sit. Now this has these long tabs on it. When this goes up under this rear end and it goes up into its spot. Those long tabs that I showed you fit up in the bottom side of your old spring perch. So it kind of puts your angle, sets your angle, your pinion angle for you. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to hold this spring up and get these started by myself, but I'm going to give it my best effort. See what happens. Okay. I got that one put in there. I got the spring mounted basically. I got the nuts on the U bolts tightened up to where the nylock is. So it's still pretty loose, but I need the rear end 
up so I can get in there with an impact or a ratchet or something to tighten those down. So I just wanted to get them mounted so they're hanging there. And then I can jack the rear end back up and get the springs mounted. And then the weight of that axle will be sitting on the springs. It'll just kind of be hanging in its place. And it'll be easier for me to kind of make everything fit like it's supposed to. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing I just did over here to the other side. Get it set up and then we'll go ahead and start hanging these springs. Alright, I didn't film it because it's kind of hairy and I'm running around back and forth trying to get stuff done. But I went ahead and got the other side uh, hung on its perch like I showed you on this side. And then I jacked my jack up and attached my shackles at the back. So now with the rear end sitting on the jack and the shackles being attached at the back, that's holding everything up. And I can get, I got room to get to my nuts down here and I can go ahead and tighten those up. And while I'm tightening those up, I want to make sure that my rear end rotates and sits down in the cup all the way like it's supposed to. I can get everything tight, make everything right. And then once it's mounted, all I got to do is jack the jack up some more. And those hangers, here's your, here's your leaf spring here, and this is the hanger. It just goes up from the bottom and the bolt goes in. So once I get this stuff all tightened up and mounted down and everything else, then I just jack it up higher. It's going to have to push those shackles back, which... Worst case, I might have to do a little pry bar action or something, but those shackles will go back up where they're supposed to. And don't let me forget before the end of all this, before I set it down or anything, to show you where the shackle sits in that brace while we had to clearance it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the U-bolts tightened up and uh, get the rear end all mounted. And then I'll show you guys that when it's all tight and done. And then I'll, uh, if I can film putting the front up, I will. If not, I'll get it done and I'll show you guys that too. So I'm gonna get back to it and uh, get this thing finished up. Okay, I got all my U-bolts uh, tightened up and that part's all done. So now I'm just gonna jack the jack up and see if my shackles slide back like they should and get my front hangers close there and we'll do what we got to do to get them in there and then we will put the bolts in Got my rear bolts in like I already showed you. Got it jacked up. Got my front bolt started, both sides. And then I jacked the jack all the way up to where I took the weight off of the jack stands. So it's just sitting on the spring. So that should be no different than if the truck was sitting on the ground under its own weight. And I still have three and a half inches between the frame and the rear end. So I still am not making my determination of whether or not I'm gonna notch it. Three and a half inches is plenty of travel in my opinion. But once I get the tires back on, get it set on the ground, I'll get on the back bumper and jump up and down on it, and if it hits, it's getting C-notched. If it doesn't hit, it's not getting C-notched. So, uh, I know the guy that owns this truck, he's not going to load the bed down with a bunch of weight and haul stuff with it and stuff like that. It's just a cruiser for him, something fun. So, 
I mean, you'd really, really have to squat the suspension to make it hit right now. But we'll see how it is when I set it on the ground. But the rear end's back in with all the drop parts on it. I'm gonna go under there and uh, for now, I gotta get new shocks, lowering shocks for the back. But for now, I'm gonna hook the stock shocks back up and get my brake line hooked back up. And I think that's all I gotta do, but I'm gonna finish those couple things up. We'll slam the tires on it, and we'll set this thing on the ground, see what it looks like. You guys saw in that little mantra I just did, the thing coming down and it came down, it came way down. And uh, that's what we were trying to do. We were trying to give it the same stance as Groundskeeper. That's the owner of this truck saw Groundskeeper and he said, I want the same stance on mine as that one has. So we dropped her down. I had to take the rear shocks off because they were too long like even with shock extensions they weren't going to fit so i'm going to have to get the i knew i was going to need to get lowering shocks i just forgot so there's no shocks on the back right now the back's sitting a little bit lower than the front i'll show you guys in a second part of that could be because there's no load on the shocks but part of that could also be just because you know i make my own drops so they might not always be perfect but i can adjust that I can get the front down a little bit more or I can bring the back up a little bit with those shackles. I can just raise it back up an inch. But I'm going to show you guys a little trick with these square bodies. I may have told you before if you've been watching the channel for a while or if you're new you may not have seen it. But right now I'm looking down the side of this truck and hopefully you guys can see the same thing I see. But that rear tire is tucked about inch inch and a half and this front wheel opening is level with the top of the tire now that makes it look like the front end of the truck is sitting up really high and if i come over here with a tape measure and i measure from the ground to the wheel opening i've got 28 and a half inches now I go back here and measure from the ground to the wheel opening and I have 25 and a quarter inches and some of you that don't know this may say dang that's like three inches lower in the back than the front no it's not so I'm going to show you the proper way to measure one of these if you're dropping them to see if you're level or not but first, I'm going to tell you why that's not the case. So, well, here, I'll just show you how to do it, and then I'll show you the difference. So, what we're going to do, put our tape measure back on the ground, and we're going to measure up to this main body line right here. And we're going to call it 33 and 3 quarter. And then we're going to come back here and we're going to do the same thing and we're at 32 and a half okay so the back is lower by an inch and a quarter but 
It's been sitting up on jack stands with the front end sagging for a week now. So those front coils may settle. And we don't have any shocks on the back, which once we put shocks on the back, that may pick it up a little bit. Now, like I said, I can raise the back up an inch or I can lower the front an inch. It, it doesn't really make any difference. But what I'm telling you about not being able to measure to the wheel opening when you're trying to see if your truck's level or not. So if I measure from that wheel opening to that body line here on the back, we've got roughly seven and a quarter. Now I come measure from the wheel opening to the body line up here, we have five and a quarter. So the front wheel opening is bigger to allow for your steering and all that stuff. The back one is smaller because it doesn't need to steer and all that. And apparently whoever designed the truck thought it looked better that way. So if you ever lift your truck, lower your truck, or anything of that sort, you can't measure from the ground to the wheel opening on a square body and think that it's, and go, oh, it's level because it's not gonna be level. The back is gonna be higher than the front. So just a little key for you guys to know. Another thing, uh, I made a mistake. When I actually got this thing set down on the ground, Granted, there's no shocks on it, which may stiffen it up a little bit in the back. When I got it set down on the ground, the frame is a quarter of an inch from touching the rear end. So I am gonna have to C-notch it. I'm not gonna do anything else to the suspension until I let that front end settle for a couple days and I get shocks for the rear. So hopefully we can get them ordered, get them here pretty quick. And then I can get that finished up. I'm probably not gonna film the C-notch. I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did on Groundskeeper. So if you wanna see how I C-notch one, go back and look for the uh, video on lower and Groundskeeper. And that's gonna be exactly what I'm gonna do on this. And uh, it was easier to film because I had the bed off of groundskeeper when I did it. So it was just wide out in the open. Here's the camera. Look, this is what I'm doing. Where this one and the rear end was out when I did it, I believe. So this one's got the bed on. It's got the rear end in the way. You guys have already seen me trying to get light in there to get you guys some video on what I was doing. Just doing the suspension stuff in the back. So. I'm just gonna do it, get it done. I'll let you guys know when it's finished and I'll show you whatever else I do on the truck to make it level like we want it. And uh, yeah, but if you wanna see how I see notch, go check out the groundskeeper video. If I can figure out how to do it, I'll put a link to it up here somewhere. And we're gonna get shocks and let the front end settle. And then we're going to see where we're at. But I mean, honestly, we're off by an inch and a quarter, I think I said. So we could go up one notch on those shackles in the back and it would be within a quarter of an inch, which in that span, you'd never notice. And it might, I mean, just that quarter of an inch in the back might triangulate it just right that it's its level or the inch, I mean. So I'm going to talk to the owner. I'm gonna let him send him a couple pictures of it, see what he thinks. If he likes how low the back is and he wants the front to come down, then I'll do that. If he likes where the front sits and wants the back to come up, then I'll do that. But it's gonna be up to him. It's not my truck. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna clean up my mess and uh, think about what I'm gonna do next. But as far as this video goes, that's all folks. So thank you guys for watching. If you're not subscribed, please do. Leave me a comment, whatever, good, bad, or ugly. Whatever, leave me a comment, please. It really helps me out. And uh, you know the drill. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be able to do this. Y'all have a good one. We'll see you next time.